How many children does it take to kill a political dissident? Trick question, one. From the anime that brought you tragic cyborg lollies before it was cool. Gunslinger Girls, a PTSD simulator set in a country whose modern events of cultural significance are mashing wheat paste into cardinal shapes and doing a little trolling with the funny faced German man. Created in the ancient age of 2002. A magical time before Japan ran out of feasible anime titles. But after that one bearded guy from Saudi Arabia. Now, I'll say it before you ask. Yes, this show has the approximate social presence in the modern anime landscape as phrenology does outside of an incel meetup. <laughs> However, I don't care. And the beatings will continue until you give neurologically conditioned child assassins a chance. <laughs> Written by you, Ada. The show follows the Social Welfare Agency, a progressive branch of the Italian government that embraces late-term abortion of political undesirables. <laughs> the Mafia, separatist militants, terrorist furries. The political situation in Italy is like a multi-layered cake of IEDs, and the answer is arming children. As a non-ageist, modern organization, the agency equitably employs child assassins to do government wet work, ethically sourced from the local tragic backstory registry. Furthermore, a robust medical insurance policy of cybernetic limb replacement ensures disadvantaged child workers are able to meet government kill quotas. I discovered the anime at school while casually listing myself on the FBI no-fly list by googling guns, girls, school, and how to build pipe bombs to make Trent stop stealing my goddamn Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Back then, I was a naive little femboy who had no concept of anime beyond Rose and Maiden and Bible Black. So. I fell into Gunslinger hard, Damn. and came out an emotional wreck whose mind swam with thoughts like, how can I buy this? And where is the nearest overpass? Ooh. In short, for this spoiler free review, take that biased part very seriously. The cyborgs are all formed into duos, a cyborg operator matched to a handler, a fratello or siblings. I am honored to witness my brother's courage. While a normal anime would have gone, ah yes, make the handler a teenage boy, or worse, introduce a morally perfect savior for the girls to fall for, Gunslinger said no. Instead, the handles are all older men. Veteran intelligence agents, former operators, and ex-police, whose sole responsibility is the training and development of their science school shooter. The bond between handler and cyborg, dysfunctional, ethical, or not, sits at the core of everything the show has to offer. Triella, Elsa, Kleiss, Henrietta, Rico, Angelica. Angelica, you give that back! Are all the cutest little murder machines state dollars can buy. Though, pointing to a main character among them is particularly difficult. No as it's a role more or less shared by all the cyborgs and their handlers. But the poster child for the anime is undoubtedly Henrietta and her handler, Jose. I've made a severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. Henrietta serves as a frontline operator, specializing in CQC and eliminating busboys. She's also the perfect advertisement for the FNP90, instilling in me a love of a gun that unreasonably persists into other media. Furthermore, I now have a burning desire to introduce it, and an entire case of 5.7 by 28 mm to my local government run facility. <clears throat> well, uh, now seems like a perfect time to talk about. Season 1 was made by animators unwilling to let the 90s go. As such, the details put into the backgrounds are excellent, with every street, house and hill probably drawn from real world references. An action sadly lacking in many anime where the backgrounds are featureless gluts of pastel coloured no. vomit. <laughs> Seemingly cut and paste from a $10 asset folder sold by a particularly enterprising kindergartner. The detailed animation of page turning, adding sugar to tea, pulling back the slide of a P229 and executing an unarmed man is all wonderfully done. So, accurate Iranian protest disruptors, as well as painted backgrounds, just about sums it up. And that is definitely the end of our discussion regarding Gunslinger's art. <sighs> God damn, I wish it was. It's time to talk about season two. In 2008, a Faustian bargain with the devil caused the show's license holder to drive off a cliff. The resulting brain damage led to the animation being entrusted to Studio Artland, who proceeded to be inspired by said brain damage and took their entire animation department off the same cliff. Thus, season two was born. I won't sugarcoat this. It's bad. It's really bad. It's like eating at an excellent steak restaurant, only for halfway through the place to become a rundown McDonald's in Kosovo hosting a Yugoslavian family reunion. Now, honestly, I'd love to lay all the fault with Artland, and certainly, they deserve a lot. But in truth, they simply responded to author Ueda, whose personal art style had developed, or regressed, into a more similar style as depicted in season two. So this is apparently the intended appearance. You were the chosen one! 
And no, Mr. Ada is not, and has not, suffered from any form of eye, hand, or brain trauma as far as I can tell. Yet. But, being unfairly mean to artists aside, one thing that Season 2 does not compromise on is the downright fantastic soundtrack. As a metaphoric nuclear weapon made of violins, the OST forcibly kidnaps your senses and demands a ransom of endlessly looping through your head, like the BTS mind virus, only with less lonely women. Musical excellence comes in many forms, but Gunslinger defines itself with a core artistic direction of strings that somehow make me want to kill myself. To me more specific, the music has this undercurrent of unease, that everything is balanced on a knife edge. It's the OST I imagine playing at the 1907 Vienna Academy of Fine Arts, while the examiners review that specific year's applicants. The entire Tima series of tracks, arguably the best of the OST, fits snugly into that long train ride but imagining a horrifically dark fantasy story niche of music. But all that said, the spectre of season 2 rises yet again, as while the quality of the music remains largely consistent in S2, the actual use of it feels shoehorned, as if they didn't know how to blend it appropriately. Kinda like the audio mixing of my videos. However, I must now confess a sin. I watched Gunslinger in the English dub the first time around. Die with shame, traitor! My racist father demanded that my murder lollies better not be in that damn Chinese shit again after he caught me watching Avatar The Last Airbender. I bring it up because while the voice acting for the dub is consistent, season 2 again drops the metaphorical ball by replacing almost the entire Japanese vocal cast. The perfectly drab, deep vocals of the German handler Hilshire, a veteran homicide detective struggling to understand the feelings of his teenage cyborg Triella, is entirely undercut as he turns into a young K-pop star who sounds just as unique. What is that? What the fuck is that? Ah, uh, screwing up a perfectly good series. Just Artland things. Luckily, the narrative was generally untouched in season two, though for some people, that might be a bad thing. Now listen, I'm talking to you, Trent. If by some miracle your chromagnum brain has kept you listening till here, perhaps amused by fast moving colors on the picture box, let me lay out some facts. You stupid. Hidden within your crusty neat cave of weak old tangas and suspiciously glazed love life figures, you may find that you cannot stand anything more upsetting than the seasonal slice of life anime needed to stave off suicidal thoughts. In such a case, I wholeheartedly recommend this. You should- But no, the series, while not grimdark, leads you by the hand, almost calmly into a pit of despair. So what I'm trying to say is, don't blame me when you start crying at the travel agency when the Italian package tour comes up. <laughs> what is the appropriate response to civil unrest, geopolitical tensions, and separatist sentiments? Correct. Force. Deep in northern Italy, a growing independence movement, chafing under the control of Rome's heavy taxation, dismissal of their cultural independence, and increasingly draconian crackdowns, has begun to try and advocate for self-determination, freedom, and democracy. Unfortunately for the rebels, this is not Disney Star Wars. In response, the Italian government, scrambling to control a spiraling political situation, and increasingly organized extremists, turned from the olive branch to their military scalpel. Not exactly. Nope. But a similar logic. At least in the games. <laughs> Our tiny tot soldiers have the cutting edge of cyber medics, so much so that it will likely kill them. <laughs> Yet, like any military contractor will tell you, good enough will usually win out over questions such as safety or the ethical and moral consideration of utilizing children for counterinsurgency operations. <laughs> like and subscribe if you too wish to sacrifice for the benevolent pasta state. <laughs> Family is not easy, nor is it universally good and the Fratello are no exception. Rico is treated by her handler as a weapon to be sharpened, moulded towards the ideal of a soldier, whereas Henrietta is coddled and shown love and compassion. Angelica, Kleist, Triella, each of them struggle with their assigned bond, just as their handlers do in turn, the girl's devotion being a weight all its own. But choice, as it is with family, is not theirs at all. Firstly, understand that Gunslinger doesn't pretend that dragging kids off the street and slapping an AK in their hands will somehow make an effective soldier. Sorry African warlords currently browsing YouTube, but it's the truth. The word conditioning is a lovely term associated with Pavlov's dog. <coughs> and your sudden sweating when I post six consecutive numbers. It is also Italian MK Ultra, except they chose a demographic less likely to fight back. Designed to suppress memories and instill pure loyalty to their handler, conditioning is the drug regimen of every tyrant's wet dream, and the chosen tool of the social welfare agency. Fear and hesitation is a rage like so many children sent to Little St. James Island, replaced by a facsimile of devotion and respect for their handler, and an unshakable loyalty to orders. Any order, 
Ethical consideration be damned. Yet the true horror of conditioning is not what it forces, it's what it leaves behind. For the girls aren't robots, their emotions not dulled or removed, only shifted. With innocent hope, they'll wonder if their handler will praise their efforts, all the while wiping blood from a knife. They'll sulk over Christmas presents, get excited to hear their favourite book, then casually comment on their organs the agency removed. Gunslinger will, if nothing else, constantly have you question who the villains are. Are we the baddies? The term hidden gem is overused. I hear it as much as isekai, beach episode, and please don't hurt me, I just want to go home. Gunslinger, however, deserves a much sadder title. Wasted potential. With changes in delivery alone, the story could have made it a timeless classic, endlessly raved about by out-of-idea YouTubers in various top 10 videos. That said, with a story so willing to sink itself into a gentle mire of depression and a hard disconnect in the art department, I can see a lot of people being put off. But I do recommend it to you, though not without some conditions. <laughs> Honestly, forget about season 2. It might not be as bad as the human eco adaption, that being my own personal hellscape manifest. <laughs> but between the poor animation and voice actor changes, you're better off going straight into the manga after season 1. But truth be told, I'm completely biased. So allow me to shed the last shackles of objectivity here and speak plainly. Many anime cluster towards key story elements, defined points of good and evil, a central protagonist, and a sense of morality adjacent to the viewers. It's effective, it's marketable, but not what I always want. Gunslinger is a showcase of the depths we can fall to in the name of ideology, vengeance, or even love. An anime that firmly believes moral flexibility is the rule, not the exception. Henrietta, Triella, Kleiss, Rico, Angelica, and Elsa didn't deserve what they got, suffering for a government that saw them as little more than numbers on a board, in a fight that wasn't theirs, with feelings curated to the needs of broken men. Theirs is anything but a happy story, but to be forgotten, that is one ending far too cruel to be allowed. Now for me to introduce the sponsor of this video, my crippling depression upon re-watching this anime. But thank you for joining me, it's been a blast sharing my deep fried anime takes. I do honestly feel there's a lot left out of the video, like the Girls Front Line crossover and Pinocchio, god damn I could talk about him, probably the best thing out of season 2. But any further and we'd be pressing 20 minutes of my inane babbling. Now the comments. There were some parts in the video where there was no music and there was no voice. Yeah fun fact, the part you're probably referencing was a deliberate choice. A bad one. I have learned my lesson. Probably. You just maybe want to reread the entire manga. Great video. You've improved a lot. Keep it up. Thanks. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I hope the eight other people on YouTube who have watched Gunslinger have a similar reaction here. Brother, you've got my sub. Thank you, Brother Peter. Endorsement by such an esteemed person has certainly upped my motivation. I'm also on Twitter now, purely for the inevitable moment where I get struck down by the YouTube gods. So go follow me over there if you can in preparation for the baptism of Susan's fire. I've put a link in the description. Next time we're going for a deep dive. A video essay investigation on where all the obese anime girls have gone. And how do we keep them there?